Hey, howdy, and how the heck are you doing? Every day, it seems like if you own a house, you've got a property, somebody's going to come up and say, usually your spouse, and say, hey, wouldn't it be great to have a sauna? Wouldn't it be great to have a spa? Wouldn't it be great to have a charger here in the garage for our electric car? There is a bunch of stuff that takes 240 volt. So today, we're going to talk about a couple of things that are going to help you plan and decide about installing a 240 volt circuit at your house for something awesome. Stay tuned. So here we are in the sunny part of Texas today. So one of those things logistics wise when you're playing the 240 is you need to look at specs, okay? Please don't, don't be the person that says, hey, I need a 220, what can you do? That, that, that's just not enough. It's like saying you need a car. So specs, here's the first thing. What, what's your voltage? Because a lot of your 220s are gonna say something like this. 240 volts at, let's say, 50 amps, okay? So that equals two hot wires, right? Coming off a breaker and a ground. But let's say you look at your specs and it says this, 240, 120 volt at 50 amps. So what that's telling you, once they add the second part, is you've got two hots, a neutral, and a ground for a wire. And when you're planning, that's a big deal. So we need to know when you're saying, hey, I need a 220 in my garage or my bedroom or something for a sauna or that EV, is we need to know the full voltage and how many amps, okay? Because these two things, especially the amps, are gonna drive the size of the wire, um, the size of the breaker, and those kinds of things. All right, so now one of the favorite topics in just your planning for your 220, checks and money, okay? So here's what I'm talking about. A lot of times, like this panel, we have plenty of spaces it's like if you have a bunch of checks. But as most of us know, having a lot of checks doesn't necessarily mean that you have a lot of money. So the other side of this is we need to look at the actual amperage in terms of what size breaker is feeding this panel before I add more to it, okay? So the thing is, what's in the account? So in this case, I have a two pole 70 and I've got the mini split, charger circuit and some other stuff. I probably couldn't add a 50 amp 220, but maybe I could add another 20 amp 220, okay? So the checks and money thing is important. Some of you, it's the other way around. You may have plenty of power, but your panel is chocked full. In most panels, you can put in a skinny or a tandem or a space saver. Depends what slang you're using in your part of the world. But basically, you could take two breakers and put them under a tandem, which would have two small handles, but only take up one space. So it's still legitimately two circuits, but now you've freed up a space, okay? So the only time this is a huge problem besides with obsolete panels is in GE panels. A lot of GE panels, again, we did a video on that, are super fussy. So as you're talking about knowing your specs and you come back and you say, hey, it's a 240-120, which means it's a four wire, 50 amp, that means we need to have two full spaces, Look at your situation, look at what's feeding it. And that is a big part of logistics. So here's a great example. If you know your specs, you've worked out your supply, checks and money. Then you look at location, okay? Any 220 current code cycle, any 220 that is in the garage or anywhere outdoors is gonna have to be GF, GFCI protected. So when I installed this probably two years ago, it was not. So you'll notice it's a 1450, it's a four wire, okay? And I've charged a couple of different cars out of here. Actually, just one, just the Mustang. But this is by far the most common. Virtually every EV charger in this case will run off of this, okay? So the explanation of the rest of this is I had this outdoor enclosure and because the garage was full with grandkids space and gym, I parked my EV outside, but I wanted to leave my cord outside. So basically the, the plan was I plugged it in, close this, I have this insulated joint, plug in, run the cord out, so the cord would be out left plugged in, and I would leave it hang or put on top, and so that would help secure it, 
okay? And then have the plug-in point be basically watertight. So there you go, specs, money and checks, location, GFCI protection, and if you can knock out those things, you're gonna be in a good way for making a plan and figuring out uh, what you're gonna do and how you're gonna run your 220. Uh, again, generally speaking, I wouldn't do this myself if I was not electrician. Uh, there's enough going on, there's enough power that's worth it to be safe. Uh, you also, this, we, which we're not gonna cover in this video, you need to work, know about wire sizes, ground wire sizes, conduit sizes, okay? And generally in most places, you guys can let me know in comments, most places when we're doing a 220 like this, we're gonna need to pull a permit. Thank you much. We just crossed, I think, 3,400 subscribers. And we're working on getting rid of ads. We're almost there, because uh, nobody likes them, including us. So, let me tell me what you think about your 220s and what you got going on. Take care.